So today we have uh, about business aligning uh, IT. So business as another language than IT. Perhaps you know, you're aware, or, or not in your case, in your company perhaps. But that's what we see uh, in common. So there is a misunderstanding, and here Michel will help us to say, okay, how do we come to zero misunderstanding and 200% agility? Uh, is this a dream? I will uh, introduce the speaker of today, which is Michel, who was CEO of um, BIM for 18 years, and last 20 years, his passion is about ontology. So you will uh, see in the coming 30 minutes, he will speak about this passion, how we can make the bridge between business and IT. The floor is yours, Michel. Is it okay? Okay. Who has ever heard the term ontology? Great. <laughs> Great. So essentially, at Mission Critical IT, we think that we have to approach software in a totally different way. Because there are four challenges. The first one, of course, is business IT alignment. IT doesn't understand business, business is problem with IT. Then we have the quality problem. Software is so complex to develop that there are many remaining bugs. We all know that and it's very difficult to get them out. The third problem is that changing software is very hard. And the last problem is that each time you change your software, you accumulate technical debt. So the entropy of your software increases. And this is, com this is also uh, made more difficult by the fact that we are in, a, again, a new transition. Uh, IDC is talking about a third generation platform, which is the cloud. And then oh, the customers is moving from investments to operational expenses, which raise another difficult challenge. So you all know that there is a, a communication gap between business and IT. And you know, IT complain that what he gets is not what is, is supposed to get. And fundamentally, uh, IT say, well, business doesn't know what he wants. And so it is extremely difficult because you know, business doesn't stop changing the requirement. And so there is a profound misunderstanding between on the one side the guy having the problem and on the other side the guy building the solution. And so where is that coming from? So for us it comes for four different issues. The first one is that business express requirement but hasn't understood them deeply. So business has a very shallow view, so has brilliant ID, but doesn't know the consequence of that ID, of this ID. So the problem is poorly understood. Then we have business analysts, and fundamentally business analysts collect requirements and produce a document. And the mortal sin of a document is that it can be read, inspected, but it is impossible to test. So you have a specification which is unproven. The third problem is that the, the mind of business and the mind of IT are totally different. You know, business thing in general terms, uh, and IT must understand the details of the problem. And so last but not least, you know, we have documents flowing from the business to IT and then suddenly IT is confronted to two different complexities. The first complexity is the complexity of the problem and it can be awfully complex. Of course, business thinks that his problem is simple, but in general, his problem is complex. And then IT is confronted to technical complexities. You know, there is a legacy to be taken care of. Uh, there is a lot of application running in the portfolio. Uh, technology is moving fast, and so 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 
IT is confronted to a complexity to the square, the combined complexity of the problem and the combine, with the complexity of the implementation. For us, I, I think everybody will agree, the fundamental problem is the specification. I don't know if you remember Fred Brooks, you know, the guy that wrote uh, in the 70s the famous book of the, on the Medical Men Month. Fred Brooks said that the hardest part of the software development is to get a consistent and complete specification. And fundamentally, programming is debugging an incorrect specification. So I will immediately jump to an example, uh, uh, and th this example is Aviva. Aviva is an insurance company, so it's the fifth larger insurance company in the world. And in France, they decided that the market was moving to more direct sales, and so that it was necessary to start a digital transformation, selling insurance products through different uh, channels. And so, they also decided that going direct supposed a complete redesign of their insurance products, property and casualty in this case. And of course, you have no to create packages, bundles, and uh, aggregate different product. And they knew that they would have to work with three different channels, the traditional call center, but now two very important channels, the web and also comparators. So in France, comparators are becoming extremely important, and they drive about 70% of direct sales. And one of the challenge with the web and the comparators is that you have to be extremely agile for one very good reason, is that if you are not rank in the first three potential supplier, uh, when somebody wants to get a quotation, uh, you are in a difficult position. So that means that you have to fine-tune your product, and it's even more complicated than that because you need, uh, you know, attractive product for the first uh, access, and then you have to add very complex bundle in such a way that you can increase your margin because the danger with uh, the direct channel is that your product be, are commoditized and so there is a pressure to reduce, uh, to reduce the price. And so, to do that, you have to, in fact, reduce the time to change your product from month. So on average, for the moment, at Aviva, uh, so it's a traditional mainframe environment, COBOL, it takes three months you know, to get a, a new version of the product out. And, and so the objective was to reduce that to one or two days. Which is a challenge because uh, you have to be sure that uh, you know your system is 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 correct, approved, and so we have helped them doing that, and it has been done on time on budget, and they increased uh, their conversion from quotations to uh, to contract by forty eight percent in the first six months. <laughs> so. How did we do that? So the fundamental idea is to stop just working with written documents and transform an informal specification into something that we call an ontology. And an ontology is nothing else than a mathematical model expressed in formal logic which defines what the business is as a theory. That means that what are the concepts, uh, what are the axioms, uh, what are the, 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 the values, uh, what are the rules. And what's key is that an ontology is totally independent in its representation of 
any technical implementation. So it is not, for instance, if you take uh, UML as, as a modeling tool, UML is in a certain way already biased by the fact that you will do an object-oriented implementation. Here, it is pure knowledge representation. So you will describe what is a, a prospect, a customer, a person, a, a premium, a guarantee, whatever. Uh, and these concepts define your vocabulary, and then you will add rules, you know, uh, what is, how do I compute the score of a customer, how do I rate a contract, uh, you know, uh, etc. And all that you will do in a form of logic, which is called description logic, uh, which is sound, uh, which is well understood. And the good news is that uh, you have international standards that define these ontology languages. Uh, it's uh, Tim Berners-Lee and the World Wide Web Consortium that start uh, the adventure of the semantic web. This, this began in uh, 2001, and in 2004, all the web ontology language was standardized. But as this is based on logic, you specify the business, and you can execute that specification without writing any line of programming code. You just take data, you inject these data in your ontology, and the ontology will give you the results based only on the business definition. More, as it is based on logic, you can reason on your model and explain why you get these results. So that means that you have something really unique, is that you have here a representation which is not only executable, but explainable. So that means that you have the possibility to debug the business. You don't debug a program, because we haven't written any program for the moment. We have just expressed the theory of the domain. And that's about the what. And the what, then we have to move to something that will work in your, in your infrastructure. So you have to start taking care of the how. That means, uh, if I uh, uh, a Linux Java environment, uh, you know, do I use this type of database? Do I use this type of uh, user interface framework? Do I use .NET? Do I program in C sharp? So I have to add a lot of technical details for the implementation, and I will never put these technical details in my ontology because my ontology should be pure business wise. So. As this is a formal model, like you know, the design of a part using a CAD CAM system, I can inject that in a robot, and the robot will drill my part here. A robot, which is something like a program, will create code, which is a business API, so a wrapper. A wrapper that makes you ontology, which is executable, accessible through a Java or a C sharp interface. So that means then, then IT can start adding what's not in the ontology and what should not be in the ontology, can add that and get a running application. The benefit is that. The whole business problem has been debugged already, and you just add technical details. Do I use Angular GS uh, for my web interface? Do I use a, a relational database or no SQL database or whatever? I add these details, and so as all the business is taken care of by, by the ontology, you know. I have to write, IT has to write much less lines of code. 
And of course, IT could introduce bugs, but these bugs will be technical bugs, which are much easier to track and fix. So IT has much more time to focus on quality, security, performance, integration. This world is the traditional DevOps world, development and operation. And so doing that, a clean separation between the business on the one side and IT on the other side, we have cleanly separated the two complexities, but business and IT share the same definition of the problem. In the current situation, business is a document in Word, Excel, Visio, and IT as a program. They don't have something in common. Here they have an object, which is that ontology, which is the precise definition. And of course, we don't enter bugs because we filter them at the conceptual level in the ontology. And so we could say that we have <coughs> aside DevOps, we have BizDev, some technical tools to support the business and rebalance the relation between business and IT. And so we call ODES the set of tools and platforms which make this possible in the real life. In the real life it means real problem, complex problem, high performance, deployed uh, you know, inside or outside and on the cloud, etc. Is that clear? So the essence of this approach is to replace testing late in the development cycle, when the program is already written, by testing as early as possible at the beginning of the software development cycle, where it is much easier and less costly to fix bugs. So if I go back to my Aviva example, so they have a mainframe written in COBOL, and so uh, they will have to expose uh, their services in the web. And they, we propose to externalize everything which was what we call the high velocity layer. Things that have been changed rapidly. That means product, their configuration, their bundles, the pricing, the scoring, the acceptance rules, etc. So we have decoupled the what, so that means the ontology from the how, the IT, and of course we keep an integration and the integration could be technically through MQ or to REST services, doesn't matter. But what's key is that on the wire, we exchange semantic information defined by ontologies. So we have a small ontology here that describe what the copy books in the COBOL world mean. So, we have seen that an ontology is a specification. It is readable by human, executable by computer. And so uh, essentially we have built a comprehensive model of the car insurance for Aviva with them, of course. And you see that we could model the whole domain in about 1,500 definitions, 200 concepts, 600 properties, which are attributes or relations and, and uh, rules. And of course, we have rules related to the pure business, but also rules defining the way you, 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 you do your integration. So that means that uh, it is very concise. It is complete. That means it covers 100% of the problem. So that means that you will not have to program business in Java or C Sharp. Here, their environment is Java. And this is interesting because uh, when you look there at three teams, one doing COBOL, one doing Java, and one doing ontology, and they used uh, an agile programming approach, you, you doing scrums. And 
each release, each release was three weeks. The ontology uh, part was always zero defect. While you always had remaining bugs, of course, in the classical Java and COBOL environment. <laughs> so how do we get that? Thanks to the capability of testing and explaining that ontology, I will do a brief demonstration that will show you uh, all that work. So we can really get tests injected in the ontology and get the result and explain them. And so this is what Aviva said, you know, productivity, quality, flexibility radically enhanced. We can work now with ontologists on the business definition, and you know this simplifies our IT estate. Okay. Questions at this stage? <laughs> so, how does that work? Finally, we still have IT developers and we still have domain experts. We just add in the middle what we call an ontologist, a knowledge engineer, someone that's the business analyst of the future. Instead of writing good word document, uh, these ontologists are able to create formal model in logic. Uh, the process is the following, we start with the vocabulary. What is a prospect? What is a customer? Is it a person? Is it a company? Uh, you know, uh, what is a guarantee? Uh, what are the product definitions? Uh, what are the premiums? What is a tax? All these concepts. So we create first what we call traditionally a structural model. In fact, in an ontology is, is more expressive than UML and entity relationship. It's a kind of super duper conceptual model. For that, we use a tool that we have invented because uh, we are in the semantic web ecology system, ecosystem. And since 2000, Stanford University has built one of the best ontology audit editor called Protégé. So we use Protégé to define the conceptual model. Then, of course, we have business rules. You know, uh, what is a young driver? Uh, what is the coefficient uh, apply? You know, to increase the premium. These are business rules. And for that, we could use Protégé because Protégé has. Uh, a tab to introduce rules, but it, it's not very user friendly. So we have our own rule editor that you will see in a moment. And then uh, with the same tool, we can test uh, the ontology and explain the result in such a way that we validate our model and we can start improving it. The second stage, of course, is to transfer to IT. So we generate an API, choosing the right language, and IT uses that API. So any, any IT, any Java or c developer knows how to do that. Uh, when we do integration, uh, we separate the plumbing, REST web service, MQ, plain old object, the Java object, uh, Microsoft Entity Framework uh, for database, and of course we define the what by mapping ontologies between themselves. And when changes are required, and you will see that in the demo, we never change the code. We first change the ontology in such a way that we can debug it, and then by regenerating uh, you know, the, the business API, we propagate those change. There are two possibilities. The change, in fact, don't impact the code, so I don't touch the, the Java code, or the, change, the changes introduce new concepts, which were totally undefined previously, and so, I will run the compiler, and the compiler today are very clever, you know, type safe. So the compiler will spot all the required change, and IT will introduce the change. So 
let's see let's see the model uh, you know essentially it's not very clear but you define here all the concepts w what is a vehicle uh, what type of vehicle uh, okay so you define the vocabulary the concept the axioms you know uh, a company uh, and, and a person are disjoint uh, uh, properties and individuals a specific insurance packet, a specific option, specific coefficient, specific parameters. Uh, here you have instance, it's not very clear, but uh, we define here three different packages for, uh, you know, uh, phi, TEF, uh, uh, civil responsibility, and so on. Then we introduce rules, and you will see example of rules in a moment. So you have a rule editor with auto completion and you know color coding and uh, testing, and you know you cannot read it. But this is a declarative rule, contrary to all the business rule engine on the market today. ILOG, Blaze, Drools, Jess, uh, that you are very familiar with. Uh, these are production rules engine. So that means that you have to follow certain priorities. Uh, you know, there are side effects in these systems. And it can be very tricky to, to debug that. Here it is purely declarative, so that means that the sequencing of rules has no, no importance whatsoever. And you will see test and explanation. Here uh, we explain why one option costs so much. So nothing special, uh, you know, it's a web application, uh, you have a nice, uh, nice look and feel. But everything that you see on this is, and you will see that in a moment, is coming from the ontology. It's not coming from Java programming. So you get prices uh, for the different options. Nothing, uh, nothing special. Uh, response time is between 200 and 400 milliseconds, depending the complexity of the computing. And, and the syst system currently support about 30,000 requests per hour. And here you see what we call our workbench. And you can browse. And for this session, you will see that this is coming from the ontology, and so you can start inspecting the value and getting explanation why, for instance, these are the values. And you will see that uh, I would like to explain why that maximal assistance is costing 83.99. So. This is coming from the ontology. It has been instantiated by the session. And I can launch. You will see that in a moment. So I see the value. And then I can launch an explanation and ask, why do I have this value? And they will tell me this is a TTC, so tax included, uh, 7118 for the insurance and 1281, and I can drill down, you know, to the finest level. And so I, I have debugged my specification in a purely declarative way. So we'll see now the flexibility. And so the system was put in production on the 10th of June uh, 2014. And on the second day, business, so it was zero defect, went through user acceptance testing. And on the second day, they saw that some drivers 
some prospects were rejected because they were older than 70 years. They, they were more than 70 years old. And that looks strange for the business. And so, let's see what happened. And so here it is, driver about 70 are rejected. Why? So uh, we introduced uh, a 75 years old uh, prospect. And so immediately we, we have the session value. We start what we call the O'Day's workbench. And we will see that in the session, a certain rule is applied. And that rule is plan 218.54. Why is this? And so we see that that rule is only applicable when the, the policy holder and the driver are different. And this was not stated. So when the driver and the policy, uh, policy holder are the same, it shouldn't, that rule shouldn't be triggered. So what we do here is simply introducing a rule where the principal driver is not, you know, different, is not uh, the, the policy holder, titulaire carte grise. So we can immediately run that in the workbench and see now that that rule is not triggered anymore and it's the normal acceptance rules that are, that are executed. And so if I restart, I reload the ontology in, in the server, uh, well, you will see that now uh, it will get a price. So, and you see, I haven't touched my Java code at all. So it's the ontologist and the, the product managers and the domain expert that looked into the formal ontology, get a price. you can shoot it now. If you, you just adapted the ontology, then you do a recompile, I assume? No, we regenerate the code. So the option that we have taken is that the ontology is interpreted. It's like SQL, an SQL engine. Okay. So we regenerate the API, and the API hide everything behind it, such as the reasoners, the stores. So all what's necessary, which is application void, but what is required for execution. Do you then generate more than stubs? Because I... Yeah, it's more than stub. You, you generate the stubs and then the developers need to instrument the real code that is still there, that is generated by the stub. So then I don't understand how it can work. It just modify a business concept. Because what the API generator create is a wrapper with all the calls to the runtime environment, including the reasoners. So the, the, the IT developer has not to take care of that. It's transparent for him. What he does, if necessary, is to change the plumbing. For instance, replace a, a SOAP web service by a REST. Uh, but it doesn't touch the business. This is transparently done for him. Because here I haven't done anything except what you haven't seen, of course, is the regeneration of what you call the stub, uh, which is that business API. Because you, you can see this as O'Days. The platform is like a DVD player with all the components. And your business is a DVD 
that you have authored and, and you put it in the player and the player plays the ontology and this is your application. We have of course uh, <laughs> some additional details that uh, web UI and the, the plumbing, the plumbing, the security and all that. So to summarize we don't work just with Word documents, we have a formal model, and we transfer that formal model to be executed through a business API. And the benefit is that we can test extremely early in the development, software development cycle and not at the end. So we separate the complexity of the problem from the complexity of the implementation. Uh, Fred Brooks call the complexity of the problem the essential complexity and calls the technical complexity the accidental complexity. We eliminate the, the error at the source. We can refine, so that means that each time we, we run that ontology, uh, we, we inject test, our understanding of the problem increases rapidly. And so we refined. So that means that we do agile development, but agile to the square. Not just programming in an agile way, but defining the problem formally in an agile way. The API to consume that ontology is, is automatically generated, so the ontology drives the application. And so we have business IT alignment, agility, quality. We have technical flexibility. Because let's suppose that Java disappear. I, I don't think so, but you know, imagine that uh, you have a, a dense multi-core processor, then maybe Java will be replaced by a better programming environment for concurrency and parallelism. You know, back to the Linda days and, and all that. But so what do we need to do? We still have all business problem definition. It's an asset. We have just to generate different code. So we have just to rewrite the, the program generator. And of course, time to market and cost is dramatically uh, improved. When I ask, you know, what was the initial budget expected by Aviva France to do that, and what they really pay, they say one fifth. Thank you. Any questions for uh, Michelle? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the view that when this is actually creating the design, because you've got your ontology with some of the logic, and then you've got the actual view that you've shown to, I suppose, the ontology together with the business person. The yes, person. yes. Yeah. That's a very good question. So, that's a very good question. So, the user experience part has been designed by a, a specialized company. But what we offer is that the the web interface is MVC, Model View Control, and the model is the business model because it refers to visitors. Uh, car insurance, uh, where is my car parked during the night, and all that is automatically coming from the ontology. And as we have a reasoning capability, we can present those questions in the most sensible way. So that means that we have a precise business definition, we can expose that automatically, not nicely, but automatically as the view model is in fact an annotation on the business model and the control part can also be uh, ontologized. Uh, that depends because you can decide that navigation will be easier to do uh, in the spring or with JavaScript or whatever. But that, that's uh, an implementation decision. But fundamentally what you display, the question you ask, all that is coming from the ontology. And it's why uh, we have shown, we have, you have seen that example that in an ontology we have the different options and these are exactly the same that are displayed. So multilingual, for instance, is very easy to do because you have you in an ontology, you have labels defined per languages. So that means that 
Even for the user interface, you have a single point of business definition. But of course, the color, the position, all that uh, stays because, uh, you know, why would you express in, uh, in an ontology the concept of color, of position? That would make you ontology, you could do it, but it, then you, you lose the, the bare bone essence of, of your business problem. And what, what, would he, what would his team involved in, in trying to create something like this for the design team? So, oh, oh, we've done that. Uh, the, the first problem is to create credibility. So, uh, the companies say, well, it looks nice on paper, but I've, we have heard so many stories that are beautiful, and then, you know, uh, it never works. So, we did a POC, a proof of concept, two months, where we took one of their existing uh, car product. And so, the only question is that, does it work? and can it rate 150,000 contract per hour? So it was not just you know, a proof that it's feasible, but a proof that it could be deployed as, as the right performance. And then they say, okay, you did it, great. So uh, you can play the violin, so you have to teach us how to play the violin. So we identified in their team uh, two COBOL business analysts and programmers that were very bright and that were not eager to do the move to another programming environment like Java. And so we, we trained them to become ontologists. And in two months, uh, they, they start creating with our help that ontology. Because for uh, somebody knowing the business extremely intimately, like these COBOL programmers, because they do maintenance of COBOL programs since dozens of years, uh, being bright, you know, what you have to understand is pure logic, uh, set theory, and, and, and simple things like that. Of course, uh, they, they need some support, but at the end we were only doing the level three support. So uh, domain experts, actuaries were the same, IT developer were the same. We introduced them to the uh, way to interface with uh, the business API, and we create in, in, their, in their company uh, two ontologists. Well, I don't quite get the bit about getting approved the performance. I do see a, a tremendous added value in presenting the business with a preview of what it's going to look like so that it can at least align this is actually what we want and this is the thing that we actually need to start programming. That seems very nice. But I don't quite get how you, with that model, are you actually going to prove that the performance is there? And you do have extraction from it. What happens in the beginning of the start of developing that you see that the database are designed and then you can invest in other structure and more and faster and sure. So the design point was that uh, for complex web transaction, when I say complex, you know when you click as one of the clicks that you see, you trigger about 20 different rating because these are bundle of products, scoring, blah, blah, a lot of things. And their design criteria was to be around 500 milliseconds uh, in terms of response time. And so, you know, to do that, the crucial piece of the system is the reasoner. Because everything is knowledge driven. So there is no procedural code. So you say uh, the price uh, is the result of uh, you know, that and that and that uh, because the car is parked during the night uh, in a garage, uh, the driver is 70 years old but is not the policy holder, and so you have to do a lot of reasoning. And so uh, what we have is a very high performance, uh, what we call in ontology parlance an, an A-box, a very fast A-box reasoner, which is parallelized. And so uh, what we did with them 
was to, to do benchmark to select the, the hardware on which to run. And the funny thing is that, uh, you know, uh, we knew how many, how many such contracts they would have to do per hour. And so we selected with them a simple Xeon based uh, 8 core uh, Intel machine with uh, Red Hat Linux. <coughs> and it supports very easily the load. The mainframe is still there, but the mainframe does what is not high velocity, accounting, uh, you know, things like that. So this is augmentation. And uh, so performance is, is not fundamentally a problem, which looks strange because there have been many, many attempts, you know, in the late, uh, in the late 80s, uh, Texas Instruments, uh, IEF, Euron from Amdahl and, and, and things like that, you know, co-generator, <coughs> and at the end, didn't go very well. But you have to remember that in the mid 80s, uh, you know, the typical uh, mini computer was the VAX with one MIPS, and now the typical uh, Intel Xeon machine is 20,000 MIPS. So. So that means that you can use that uh, CPU performance to do very clever things. <coughs> you know, you have also to factor in that uh, this is based on logic, so you have a lot of uh, result of research uh, called abstract interpretation that helps you to optimize uh, everything that you program and things like that. So it works. People think that it's nice on paper, but it will not pass the real-life test, but it did. I'm sorry? <laughs> Let's say this is a okay, company-wide insurance company, offers all over the world. I need to get some feedback on the contract that are introduced somewhere in Brazil where they're still using a dialogue line. And the client really wants a free client open to you when you say, okay, I want a reply within five and a millisecond. Very nice. Yeah, but in the days that replies within a within five and a millisecond. Good. Fortunately, that tiny little offers in Brazil and those twenty-five hundred other offices all over the world, they only synchronize live twice a day. So unless you're going to upgrade the infrastructure everywhere, you're never ever going to have the promised. But you can you, you, you can deploy you can deploy locally uh, the same server, but with one or two cores, and uh, you know with a LAN, and uh, you haven't necessarily to synchronize. You can you you can distribute your ontology. Finally, the ontology uh, is XML. At the end, it's it's a set of the the syntax is XML, so it's a, an XML file. Uh, like a program is uh, Java text or whatever. And so when we distribute the application, it is a var, a war, a jar, uh, which includes the Java and the ontology, the XML. So you can deploy on a central uh, set of server, you can deploy it on the cloud, you can deploy it on a small server locally. That's a pure. Uh, technical infrastructure problem. We, we don't change anything there. We, we just have to guarantee that it works. And the people interfacing with the business, those are the ontologists? Yep. What kind of training do they get? They get training in this particular product? Or they also get communication training? So these are, the one that we trained are business analysts and programmers with 25 years of COBOL expertise. And so we organized four workshop and then two weeks of uh, exercises and then we started uh, creating the ontology with them. So it's not the product. Uh, you know, what, what they need to learn is what is an ontology, uh, what uh, the, the, the rule language that we use is Swirl, the semantic web rule language for uh, the AI guys, this is on close data log stuff. But, uh, you know, it is if then, so conjunction, very simple things. And uh, 
what you manipulate is the I can show you that so uh, I don't know if I have an example so the tools that they have to learn is protege you you go on the web and you download it uh, use the 3.5 version which is older but better uh, then you have all tool which is what we call the Odai's workbench which is a rule editor and the, the the tool that we use to test and explain the ontology uh, we have additional tool to produce a graphic representation of the model uh, we have tools to generate the API. Uh, when we generate the API, we also document it in JavaDoc or in NDoc, uh, depending it's uh, .NET or Java. And then we have the platform, which is the runtime system, like uh, Oracle as a runtime system, which is an SQL engine. Here we have an application engine, which knows about the application through the ontology. And so what they have to learn, Besides what an ontology is, is the protege tool and the, the workbench. That's it. Okay, Perhaps we have still time after words, uh, okay. then you can still continue. But Perhaps uh, one last question, sorry to interrupt, but then we have still time. Uh, perhaps people have to go uh, afterwards, so that's why. Jan? No. Okay. A last question from. Then I want to thank you very much, Michel, for You're welcome. this ent interesting presentation. It was very clear for me. I hope for you as well. <laughs> My goodness. Here, some chocolate. Thank, thank you, you very much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>